this subject gets to me and I find it hard to discuss because it's something I don't like to talk about. But it seems that bullies have found an interesting way to prey on people's guilt and gullibility in the form of a secular religion. I really, really hate bullies. I hate every form of bullying that exists. I hate when I see it and I get very, very irritated when I have to witness it and can do nothing about it. So let me break it down so you can see what I'm talking about. First, when you think of bullying, you probably think of this. Or this. Put the money in the bag. Come on, give me some money. What's up? Give me money. Out your fucking mouth, you want my little puss bag? Or maybe this. It started out with words. He was called just horrible names. It progressed to having trash thrown at him. He was punched in the stomach. He was made to lick a bus window. He was jumped from behind walking to the buses. He was ridiculed for the music he listened to. Um, you name it. They looked for any little thing just to make his life miserable. When he was jumped walking to the bus, the, the boy told him the night before that he was going to do it. He said to him in a text, why? I know you don't like me. That's why I don't come near you. I don't have any interactions with you. I respect that. Why can't you respect me? What have I done to you? His response was, because you're a pussy and you need your ass kicked. It just, it, it makes no sense to me even today. One of the kids that Daniel had a lot of issues with had texted him. I saw the text myself. And it said, why don't you take one of your precious guns and do the world a favor, go kill yourself. He texted that same kid and he said, you won't have to worry about me anymore. I'm going to go home and kill myself. And, he, and the kid came back with put up or shut up. That day he told people in lunch, he had told people in his classroom, told a number of people on the bus, that he was going to kill himself. Those were his words, I'm going home and I'm gonna kill myself. And the bus driver said, I'll see you tomorrow, Dan. He told the bus driver, you won't see me tomorrow. The one person he knew that would do something was the last person he texted and the last person he called, his hunting friend, Matt. He knew Matt would try to call us and he said to Matt, please don't call my mom. My mom will take me to the hospital. He was trying to keep Daniel on the phone, get his sister's attention. He was writing her notes and having her call their father, who's a friend of my husband's. And we missed the call. We missed the call. We came out of Michael's basketball game and my husband Rob said, I missed a call from Kale. I'll call him when I get home. Next thing happened, literally within a minute of saying that, so our other friend Wally calls. Now guys don't talk to each other all the time. And Rob runs to the VN and he said, Daniel's talking suicide. I called my next door neighbor and I begged her, go over and check on him. And uh, she walked in the door and she yelled, Daniel. And she heard, she thought she heard him say something. And she shouted out, we love you. And then she heard the shotgun blast. But that's not all there is. There are other forms of bullying that occur which don't involve violence. These types of bullies are meant to tear you down and belittle you into submission. If you don't comply, they use the system at their disposal to get at you. Let me give you an example of what happened to me. Several years ago, I had a friend over for drinks. I had no idea that he was on medication for PTSD from his days in the armed forces. He flipped out and I had to call the cops because he went crazy. It was clear that he wasn't in his right mind, so I had to get him detoxed so that he would come back to his senses. Now, I never pressed any charges because he did assault me in this instance, and he was extremely intoxicated, and apparently he was intoxicated before he came to my house. He knew that I had alcohol, so I'm guessing that he just came over to get a little bit more drunk, and he got blackout drunk. He didn't remember anything that happened. 
His wife turned this into a defense war against me because I wouldn't do what she came to my house and told me to do. She threatened to insult me in front of my family. I told her to get the fuck out of my house and to never come back. And that really pissed her off. Next thing I know, I'm being contacted to show up at the local sheriff's office. I sat in the room with the detective for a moment. He put a folder on the table in the room and walked out for a little bit. I looked over at the folder and it read, Distribution of Pornography to a Minor. I was pissed. I have four children and the eldest at the time was 16. I was in the middle of a custody battle of trying to get my son out of a very hostile environment at the time. And little did I know... I thought it was the mother was charging me with this because she alluded to me giving porn to my son and thinks that I have done so because she heard it from a friend, but she wouldn't tell me who that was either. So I got angry because I was being charged with something I didn't do, but I found out that I was angry at the wrong person. Since there was no evidence of the claim, there was an attempt to drag my name through the mud. That's all this really was. She also called my ex-wife to tell her that I gave porn to my eldest son. The one that told me this was my ex-wife. I found out that she basically tried to tell everybody in the neighborhood that I was giving porn to children and that children were at risk around me and that I was abusive and that I was um, violent and pretty much tried to smear my name publicly to the entire neighborhood. And keep in mind, this is a small town so rumors fly fast. Of course, there was no ev evidence, and the whole thing dropped, and I moved away from that area anyways, so it's now a moot issue. But needless to say, this caused a lot of drama between me and my ex-wife, which made it difficult to communicate any needs or issues with my son, especially since I was taking custody away from her. Now, the earlier clips that I showed of kids getting bullied... That was me, not till not so long ago. I never fought back, and because of that, I was chased, cornered, and beaten by no less than three people. It was a family of bullies that usually caught up to me and punched me in the face, kicked me in the nuts, curb-checked me, you name it. I probably felt it at one point in time, but I would never fight back because if I, I knew if I did, somebody's going to get hurt, and I didn't want to hurt anybody. At one time, I had 15 kids that thought it would be fun to corner me and beat me down in elementary school. Clearly, this isn't the only abuse I've taken. I've also experienced bullying through the system, as I've pointed out. I've experienced bullying through mental abuse as well, from the abuse of my parents const constantly telling me that I'm stupid and will never amount to anything, that I'm worthless and found under a rock. I've, I've experienced physical abuse by being beaten and whipped by my father when I didn't do exactly what he asked me to. After school, when I got out of high school, I went into a toxic relationship where me staying at home and being a dad was the same thing as free babysitting. But if she were to stay home and be a mom, she's parenting or being a mother. And that was just a small little jab in comparison to the multiple jabs that I received from her. The hounding insults that I received quickly turned to violence and I was stabbed by my ex-wife with a nail. It wasn't very bad, it wasn't a kitchen knife, I didn't bleed hardly at all. It was like a pinprick, but needless to say, violence was there and it was a very traumatizing experience because this is a person that I was supposed to be living my life with. Ironically, the system again was turned against me. She took that opportunity to say that I was the crazy one and that because I left and because no police report was filed of the assault charge that I was indeed the abusive one. I went and sought mental health for depression because of the abuse that I received from her, from my parents, and other issues that were all just weighing upon me. But because of that, I was deemed unfit to raise my own child. Yet here's the person that was abusing me, belittling me, and stabbed me, and she took custody. Needless to say, I've experienced bullying for a very, very long time. Long enough to know how to deal with it. But with each bully is a different experience, and how you approach it should be equally different. So when I saw this... Yeah, and so I think it's... it's that needs to keep happening, right? If you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And like, I need to give you attention because you're a garbage human. Whatever, dude. Um, but it's, you know, like the fact that these dudes are making endless videos that just go after every feminist over and over and over again, I think is 
is a part of the issue of why we have to have these conversations. We don't just get to be online. We don't just get to participate like everyone else. I knew I had to say something. This type of bullying is the most common type among women. They typically become aggressive and violent if two conditions exist. First, the woman is in a social situation or a public place and she believes the victim will not re retaliate. If this is the case, basically what happens is the woman is cheered on for beating her victim. The second condition is the woman is in a private situation and her victim's pride will not allow him to retaliate in fear of being seen as weak by his peers. So a woman will beat you in private, but if you were to hit her back, she would instantly cry the victim. In either situation, you can see the psychological abuse is used in sociological stigmas against the victim. However, the sting of female bullying has a longer lasting effect than male bullying. Oftentimes, males resort to physical violence, insults, and tend to be more aggressive than our female counterparts. It doesn't last as long either. They don't try to destroy your lives because of hurt feelings. They just try to hurt you, period. But the causes and motivations of aggression and bullying have similarities that cannot be ignored. In an article titled Bullying in the Female World, we find the similarities all too obvious if we were to take a moment and identify them. To quote the article, motivation for both groups it usually includes a desire or power for control for achieving greater social status and popularity jealousy fear and derailing competition aggressive behavior for both male and female children can be found as early as preschool age and is most prevalent in adolescence and can continue well into adulthood however the major difference between men and women in the spectrum of bullying is the most often employed Intimidation and physical aggression are the common tools within male bullies and aggressors. Women are far more cunning and have a lasting effect on people when it comes to the female approach to aggression. As the author discusses a movie called The Help, she outlines female bullying to a T. This, coupled with my own experiences of addictive female bullies, solidifies my assumptions associated with female bullies. To quote, What struck me as I was watching the film is how it also dramatically and effectively captures the emotional and psychological violence of social aggression, including the sting and cruelty of verbal weapons women use. The words now associated with female aggressive behavior include exclusion, ignoring, teasing, gossiping, secrets, backstabbing, rumor spreading, and hostile body language, such as eye rolling and smirking. Most damaging is turning the victim into socially undesirable. The behavior and associated anger is hidden, often wrapped in a package seen somewhat as harmless or just a girl thing. The covert nature of the aggression leaves the victim with no forum to refute the accusation. In fact, attempts to defend oneself leads to an escalation of the aggression. The film captures a number of these weapons as well as a pattern found in interactions of males. The justification for use of the same kind of aggression, physical or social, by the good guy in response to the original aggression by the bad guy. Now I want you to take a good look at all of the, what's just said there. The things that I don't agree with is verbal weapons and that being violence. Psychological and emotional harm is not necessarily caused by violent acts. They are abuse, for sure, but not violence. Violence requires physical act. I don't like the wordsmithing in there, but the effects of bullying are still the same. It does harm to the individual. It may not be physical harm, which is easier to get over, but psychological harm has longer lasting effects than physical harm. Anita, Anna, Big Red, Christy, and other people in the space of social justice and feminism are all bullies. They lead a troop of bullies that seeks to silence people and their discourse because if it doesn't fit into their narrative. It rips down their control of the conversation and removes their power. Their motivations are obvious when you read how female bullies typically behave. Of all the types of people that exist in this world, bullies are the ones I honestly say I can hate. How do you deal with a bully is entirely up to you. Use what works to destroy a bully because all they want to do is succeed at subjugating you, and I refuse to be the victim.